Do you want to learn how to get healthy, perform at your best, and create body composition changes that last? In this podcast, we're going to talk about all things fitness, nutrition, health, and mindset. We're going to learn how to create real results, and most importantly, how to maintain those results in the long run. I'm your investors. I'm Christine and Dolly. And you're listening to Talking Nutrition. Welcome back to Talking Nutrition, episode 21 today. We have another guest on, Andy, who is one of Christine's clients. Andy's going to tell us a little bit about his experience with keto, uh, dieting in the past, and his struggles with binge eating. And he's actually going to open up about that stuff, which I just said off air already. I think that's super cool. So first of all, man, like, thank you <laughs> for being here and being willing to share that with us because a lot of people might resonate with this stuff. Not everyone would actually be willing to get on a podcast and talk about this. So first of all, like, thank you for being here. I think it's super cool. Yeah, of course. I'm excited to be here. I think your podcast and what you guys have done in the last 20 episodes have been great and um, super valuable and really good information in it. So glad to be a part of it. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you so much. When I when I had said on uh, my Instagram story that I was going to bring you on the podcast, people were really excited about it. I had some people, you know, message me and say it's it's a lot more powerful coming from the actual client. It's so yeah. true, and that's why yeah. I wanted to bring you on for sure. Because like we we can talk about stuff, you know, but then it's like yeah. still like us talking. So, I mean, who better to ask than the people who go through this shit, you know? Right. right. And, um, you know, you, I already mentioned it, like, so you had experiences with keto and then dieting and binge eating. Christine also kind of told me about, like, how you guys worked through those struggles, right? And how you kind of uncovered the triggers that actually led to the binge eating, which we'll get into uh, today as well. And how you basically, like, figured out now, like, how to do better, Right. While eating carbs, right? Mm -hmm. While creating results and actually having like a way better like relationship to food than before. Right. So as always to the listener, before we actually get in, sorry, I think Racine was gonna say yeah. something, right? No, you're good. I, I heard you like <laughs> I have something I to say, but I'll say it after. <laughs> sorry about that. That's okay. I just want to get this out of the way, you know. <laughs> So as always, I remember remember to uh, to drop us a quick five star review. You know the cool thing about these reviews is that you can actually do it right now. It takes like two seconds, mm. <laughs> but actually it, it helps us a lot. And if you are enjoying the show, please do so. You know, it takes a couple seconds, and it actually means the world to us. To uh, the world to us, if you do so. So thank you again, Andy, for coming on. And Christine, what were you going <laughs> to yeah. say? Yeah. So I I want to preface this by saying that. I asked Andy about everything that we're going to talk about. Like there's not stuff I'm going to share that he's not comfortable with. Right. So people yeah. understand, like, I'm not just putting him on blast. Like he's, <laughs> he's totally good with everything that I'm going to say and everything that we're going to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so first things first, like, so who are you? Like, what do you do? And tell us a little bit about life, like before working with Christine. Yeah, so I'm Andy. Um, I uh, am 36 years old, um, and I've been a big guy, a big kid, a big individual my entire life. I was 11, 11 pounds when I was born, um, so the size, I've always had size, um, and I've always been told, uh, you're just a big guy, and yeah, that's great. And all, uh, also created some complexes within myself. Um, I don't actually think Christine and I have actually talked about this in depth, but you know, to, to the point where I didn't want to work out in gyms because, uh, I, I perceived myself as this big guy. I'm supposed to be able to move all this weight and yeah, my lower body is really strong. My upper body hasn't always been really strong. And I feel like it was just, a it was this complex that I had that everyone was staring at me at the gym when I was working out. So I'm, uh, grateful and, and, um, I guess lucky enough that I've, I've the last 12 years of my life, I've worked in college athletics. So, um, I've had a 
state-of-the-art gym to work out in at any hour of the day that I wanted to. Um, and some people might think, well, man, you have all this at your fingertips. Um, you, you can work out every day whenever you want. Um, and yeah, that's the case. But when you're not there mentally and you're not there to really understand the whole process, um, those workouts come few and far between sometimes. Uh, and I work in a fast paced environment. My day is not the same every day, whether it, you know, I recently just started a new job. Um, and now I'm in the professional sports world, which is awesome. Um, been here a month and it's, it's been a huge career change and a huge career trajectory, uh, change for me. But, um, I was working out, you know, in the mornings and the afternoons and the evenings. And if I had this set time of when I was going to work out in my day, just changed on a win, then that threw my whole plan out the window. And I was like, well, I'm not getting my workout in today. Cause I said I was going to work out at noon. And by the time I get done with work, it's five or five thirty, And I'm like, beat. And I'm like, well, that chalk, that went up to a loss. Um, and it kind of just, that's kind of how I lived my life a little bit. It was hit or miss tried, you know, using some programming from certain people, uh, certain, you know, see something that I like on Instagram or whatever and follow their programming for a little bit. And that was good, but not necessarily the results that I wanted. Um, also expecting immediate results. And we know that there's no such thing as immediate results yeah. in this world. So, um, yeah, um, that's, I guess, a brief background of, of kind of where I was before I started this journey, before we get into keto, before we get into working with a nutrition coach and, and things of that nature. Nice. So tell us a little bit when you started like, what was it that made you reach out to a nutrition coach um, and start into, you know, that process on the nutrition side of things? Yeah. So I have a niece and nephew. Um, I live in Texas. They live in Ohio. I'm super family oriented and super close to them. We FaceTime probably two or three times a week. But um, my niece was two years old at the time, maybe three, I guess three. Um and it, I was home at Christmas and I weighed 347 pounds and just playing with her was uncomfortable, like being on the floor and running around with her and, um, just keeping up with her was really frustrating that uh, why am I tired? Um, I had, I'm not exaggerating three shirts that fit me and just rotated them. And that was embarrassing. And I didn't feel comfortable in anything that I wore. I didn't feel comfortable going out in public. I didn't even feel comfortable necessarily around my family and just hanging out because I just was uncomfortable with myself and my appearance. And I had that revelation when I was in Ohio and I started researching nutrition companies and, um, I vowed that I was going to make a change. I wasn't going to, live that sedentary life. I wasn't going to live this, you know, unhealthy lifestyle. And it started with me having to make that decision. No one else was going to make that decision for me, but myself. Right. Yeah. We talked about this last podcast about like, it, it's up to you. You have to want to change. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. So, um, so, okay. So you then found a nutrition coach, uh, started with that person. Um, and did they start you on to keto right away? So I knew some people in my life, um, that had done keto and, you know, had big results. I knew I had a lot mm -hmm. of body fat to lose. So I was like, Hey, I found this nutrition company and seemed very reputable. Um, I liked the content they were putting out. I thought it was very informative. Um, so I, you know, reached out to them and I chose to do keto in my onboarding. Okay. Um, because I knew because of the body weight that I had to lose, that it was going to be quicker. And yes, there was 
a huge part of that, that I needed to see results quickly in, in this process to keep on track. And it was awesome. I loved it. There was a point in time where I was like, I don't think, yeah, maybe we'll adjust these macros in the future a little bit, but I don't think I'll never not eat keto. I feel like I, at the time I was like, yeah, I really enjoy these high fat foods. I'm not missing all the carbs all that much. Um, and I was strict. Like when I say strict, like to the gram of macros, a little obsessive, probably the first mm-hmm. nine to even year, nine to 12 months of keto. Um, and then it kind of unraveled. Um, I, uh, saw results, lost quick 50 pounds. Then we moved into the, you know, losing 60 pounds and 70 pounds. And that, those last 20 pounds, the 60 and 70 pound weight loss. Um, I found that my workouts were terrible. I had zero energy. I wasn't progressing in terms of not that I don't really care that truthfully, I don't care how much I can lift. Like, yeah, I'm not trying to throw 500 pounds on the squat rack and, and squat it, you know, um, right. that'll be cool if it comes. Uh, but like, that's not my motivation. My motivation is to be functional and healthy. And, and so I, like I said, work in a fast paced environment to where I actually started taking the nutrition program, like the, the certification through this, through this uh, company just to better my knowledge. And I'm going through these, you know, little classes and I'm like, well, we're not doing what you're teaching. So I've been in a deficit. I was in a deficit with no diet breaks, with no refeed days, with no nothing for an entire year. And I started talking to my nutrition coach who I had a really good relationship with and was vulnerable with him. Um, and I was like, Hey, like on game days, can we, can I like get a few more calories? Because this is a 5 AM to 11 PM like day for me. Um, and it's just not a regular day. I'm walking 26,000 steps plus, yeah, you know, those days are huge. Yeah. On average on a game day. And so when he didn't really take that, um, ask and run with it, we, we still stayed in a deficit, um, didn't, didn't get any refeeds and didn't get out of a make or get, get, go into a maintenance phase at all during that period. I started to question it and probably around that time, I think even before Christine was starting to pump a bunch of really good information on Instagram. And I reached out to her, just DM'd her and would ask her questions and she would answer. Yeah, we talked a lot in the DMs before we started. <laughs> yeah. And was always willing to answer and never like, Hey, you're not a client. I don't want to, you know, give you any information or help you. That wasn't the case. It was always, um, yeah, I think, you know, you're, you're doing well. She never dogged, you know, my, the company that I was working with or anything. Um, but then it was like, it was this just revelation of like, I can't do this anymore. Uh, I can't be in keto. I'm cheating on the weekends. And when I yes, say, yes, I wanted to talk about that. Cause I have that written here about how you used to almost like cheat the system, but I don't think it would, it wasn't your fault. Right. Because, you know, the coach wasn't listening to you. You needed time out of the deficit. You needed more food. And so, yeah, I mean, it makes sense that you would end up binging and stuff, right? Right. So I went through this process, probably a six month process of being strict keto five days a week and Friday at five, lambing whatever it was from McDonald's to I would literally be, it would be a Saturday afternoon and I'd be at Kroger's two miles from my house. I'd be like, I'm going to Kroger and I'm getting this, 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 and this, and I'm eating it. I'm going to eat it all. And I did it. I ate the entire box, the entire bag, a whole box of cereal, whatever it was. And I knew my body enough because we were tracking, we were doing all the metrics. I knew my body enough how to to cheat the system. I knew I could be strict keto for five days. My check-in was on Wednesdays. 
Sunday, you know, Sunday, maybe I'd taper out of that binge, no holds bar, like just eat everything in sight. And then Monday and Tuesday, I went into this, like I was eating even less than what my prescribed calories and macros were because I knew by Wednesday I'd be back at that pretty close to that right. weight that I was the week before and all as well. Um, and that was a huge stress mentally. It was a huge stress on my body. Um, it was just this endless cycle of bullshit. <laughs> like yeah. in, in my head, I knew it, but I couldn't stop it. And then yeah. it was, I don't know, we, Christine and I have been working together for nine, 10 months now. Shoot. Maybe mm -hmm. no, 10 months, probably. I think it's around 10. Yeah. Um, so I think it was last Christmas I reached out to her and I said, Hey, I need to kind of gave her the background of what I was doing. And I said, I, I, I want to make a change. Do you have any openings, uh, on your roster? And she, she didn't at the time. Um, but she, I, I went through the onboarding and she thought around March, um, we would be able to start working together. And I think it was mid January. She messaged me and was like, Hey, I'm ready. If you're ready. And I was like, let's go. And <laughs> I, whatever you call it, shut down my account with the other company. And, and I thought about this mm -hmm. on the way into work today, how I knew, and Christine talked about this. We've talked about this of like how I knew I wasn't a person and I was just a number in that, in that company. Um, I didn't get like a message or an email from them and be like, Hey, how, why'd you abruptly quit? We were together for 18 months and there was no follow up of like, are you okay? Or what happened? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. And wow. I just made that transition to, to KA nutrition and the rest has been incredible. Um, so with that, Christine, I don't know if you have anything to add. Yeah. So I think I remember you telling me that you had communicated to that coach that, you know, this wasn't working anymore or like you wanted to start to transition out of keto and they, they did it. Right. 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 Yeah. So I blatantly said that in multiple check-ins and like, Hey, when do you think we can transition out of this? And at the time I was sitting around like 260 ish two sixty five ish. And they're like, Hey, let's get to 255 and then we'll start transitioning out. But I was like, th that was probably three months of that whole cycle of, I didn't move on the scale. I didn't move down at all. I always right. just, just came ask, back yeah. down to that 260, 265 mark after that weekend. So it was right. doing all this work in the week during the week and working out and eating well or eating per my macros. And then the weekend just blowing it out of the water and then starting Monday and Tuesday to check in on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, um, it was, Hey, one more week, one more week, one more week. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a huge red flag for people who are uh, who are listening here, and you know, it's it honestly like blows my mind sometimes to hear these stories with coaches. Like, I just I don't understand. Um, but sometimes with big companies like that, it's just a superficial coaching experience, right? Right. And I will say this, and. I keep saying this, Christine and I have talked about it, but we've, this is how close we are. Um, this yeah. is like, if I didn't go through that process with that company, yeah. I, we wouldn't be as successful nope. in these first nine, 10 months that we've been working together because I got in the habit of tracking. I got in the habit of measuring. Mm -hmm. I got in the habit of checking in. I understood what a check-in was. I understood the information that Christine needed from me to help me. Um, and then I also said, a didn't know I was setting a non-negotiable as Christine states, uh, but non-negotiables are one of my favorite tools we use. But I said a non-negotiable that I wasn't going to cheat. I wasn't going to cheat the system. I wasn't going to, you know, there were times when it would creep into my head of like, mm, 
if I didn't eat, I ate a little bit off. This is kind of in our refeed and reverse diet mode of like, yeah, I ate way more than I should have. And it was like, I could just track it as I hit every macro on point today. And it's not going to really be the end of the world. But I knew in my mind of like, if I start that now, then this ball of yarn yeah. could start to unravel. And I just stayed true to that of right. like, no, whatever I put in my mouth, I'm going to track. Even if it is, even if for some reason I just grew up royally that day, um, it's only going to help Christine understand me and understand my mindset and why I did things. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, right off the bat. And this is, again, very important for people to understand is like, you know, oftentimes we will have clients who won't check in, um, you know, or, you know, potentially be honest because they are afraid of letting us down. And a good coach will always tell you that those are the most important weeks to check in with us. And if we don't know everything that's going on, we can't help you to the best of our ability. And so, yeah, like Andy was always super open and, and vulnerable with me. Um, I actually like went back in your check-ins and was, was reading some from, you know, like week eight and we were, we were in the struggle, like we were struggling, you know, with, with transitioning out of, out of keto and like, you know, uncovering all of what was happening and potential triggers and stuff, but we would not be where we were are today unless he was open and transparent like he was with me. So, you know, if you're working with a coach, it's so, so important um, to be transparent. Absolutely. That's an accountability. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's why we do the check-ins, you know, I was actually going to ask. So, so when you got those thoughts of, Hey, maybe, maybe I just you know, cheat the system a little bit, you know, was that almost, um, did that sometimes come from a place where you kind of wanted to show the coach or, you know, Christine in, in the beginning that you were still doing good, even though you kind of like actually weren't, you know, like, was it also part of like feeling bad because you're not doing the thing and then kind of like sharing that with exactly them? that it's, 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 yeah. it's the, I'm a competitive person. I, that, that was a failure like that day or that meal yeah. or that period of time was a failure in my mind. Um, or was that, that's how my mindset was then. Um, I, I didn't want to fail. I didn't want to let Christine down because yeah. I know she's putting all this time and effort into me. And then I make bad decisions and like we take three steps back or so I thought. Um, and yeah. when I realized that, yeah, well, no, we're, if, if I just am straight with her, we're going to, we're going to work through this and get through to the quote unquote finish line of this little section faster than if we just keep going back and forth with this. Totally. Hey, I uh, was great this week, but in the back of my mind, I really wasn't. Yeah. Right. So it was kind of like all or nothing in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Where it was either, okay, I'm just going to do this really strict like keto thing or fuck yep. it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I feel that. I feel like that's common too. Like you, you just want to do good, you know, like you want to perform basically like perform, mm -hmm. you know, like you want to do well, you want to do good for your coach, but then as soon as there's like one slight difference, what you said with your, your training, for example, okay, like shit, something came up, never mind, yep. you know? Yep. Like, I feel like a lot of people tend to, to get into that where it's like, okay, I'm going to start working with a coach or follow a plan or whatever it might be. And then if I don't manage to follow it, like that's on me, then I might as well just, you know, try again tomorrow, try again on Monday or something. Yeah. So that switch from like all or nothing, you know, kind of like being on keto and then binging over the weekend to now not necessarily like being perfect all the time or which I was going to ask, like, what does it look like for you, for you now? So where in the beginning you wanted to be perfect with everything, how do you do it now? 
are you perfect with everything or maybe not at all like most days is it consistency like what do you kind of focus on and what is important for you that keeps you on track i still have that there's a tiny bit of being perfect in my macros um and there was a time a couple months ago where i had a freak out like um my parents came into town we were going out to dinner i had this meal picked out it was going to hit my plan around the meal and then i got to the restaurant and i was like oh they have this new item on the menu it's this like farm to table super good quality restaurant and i was like i'm getting that and in my head i had what it looked like <laughs> i've never seen this meal before but in my head i had what it looked like and then it came to the table and i was like shit this is <laughs> not what i was expecting <laughs> And I ate it and it was delicious and I enjoyed it, but it was a, literally as soon as I took the last bite, I was like, shit. And I had this internal struggle of like, I just blew my entire dinner this day shot. Um, what am I going to do? Like, I always have this fear of spiraling in the back of my head. Like, is this the first point of spiraling? And thankfully, Christine has allowed me to text her in certain times of need <laughs> and I texted her and it was late. Um, it was late and I knew I wasn't going to get a response that night. Um, and she texted me in the morning and I had a screenshot of my entire meal sent it to her. And she's like, dude, you're like 200 calories over what your prescribed calories are. So basically you just had a refeed day yeah, your fats were a little higher, your carbs were a little higher, your protein was a little lower. But in the grand scheme of things, your calories were only 200 calories more than what you were supposed to eat that day. Like, so what? The big win was, and I didn't even think about this part, Christine brought it up. She's like, the big win in is you didn't go home and then continue to eat. You didn't go home and have a bag of chips and candy and whatever else. It was had the meal, had this thought, put it on paper, put it in text, and then moved on. Um, and that was a huge win for me. That was this, that's when I started that, that moment was a shift in perfect. You can't be perfect all the time. Like, yeah, you can be perfect for a meal. You can be perfect for a day. You can even probably be perfect for the week, but life happens. And yeah. Life isn't perfect, so you just got to roll with those punches and make the best choices you can for those moments. And I'll fast forward to just Thanksgiving um, last week. Like at work, we worked on Thanksgiving. Um, we had a potluck and then talked to Christine about it. And I was going to track that day. And then I got into it. I had a really good breakfast and got into our potluck lunch. And I was like, this is just going to stress me out if I track. And I just didn't worry about tracking. I just had super good portions and enjoyed it and had dessert. And I knew at the end of the day, when it came to Friday morning, I was going to be right back on the horse and eating another good breakfast and working out. And, um, I know I fast forward a little bit, but this is a pretty big, not cheating the system thing for me that has happened today even like so i was 258 going in on thursday to be, before we ate and then the rest of the week i was around you know i think i didn't weigh the next day because i know that's a trigger for me so i didn't weigh in on friday morning saturday i weighed and i was 260.8 and then yesterday i weighed i was 260.4 and today I weighed and I was 256.8. So like it all regulates back down once you're consistent yeah. with everything where prior to a year and a half ago, I'm like, well, shit, I got to get back down tomorrow. So then I'd starve that day, the next day. Mm. And ultimately <clears throat> I'm just, again, cheating the system because that's not necessarily how it works. So Right. Um, those were, that'll be in my check-in today, Christine. I'll write about that. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a huge 
kind of another, like, I just feel like week after week or month after month, there's these <clears> things <throat> that come up that are like huge wins that I'm not even expecting, or I don't even realize are going to happen. Um, and it's all about, because I'm staying true to myself of not cheating the system, staying true to Christine's process and just working at it. I say it's, it's, it's one day at a time, one meal at a time and one workout at a time and, um, just chip away at it. Yeah. Yeah. Because <clears throat> these situations, you know, at the beginning, even at the beginning of us working together, um, these would, you know, potentially spiral. He would have these moments and then it would potentially spiral into like, you know, two, three days. Right. Or he, he or he can beat a, himself up for a week straight where now it's like, okay, you have more calories and now we're going to move on. So him not going those days is, is a massive, massive, uh, is pr massive progress. Yeah, absolutely. So, <clears throat> Um, I want to talk a little bit about us transitioning out. So he came to me, he was doing keto. Obviously he was having, he was having some binging episodes as we talked about, but like majority of the time he was in this like keto macro place, essentially like really low carbs, high fat. Um, so 20, the first 25 three, grams of carbs a day, just for the yeah, like. <laughs> Why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, we obviously decided we were gonna, you know, transition out, and that took us about three or three months or so. Um, you know, we did it fairly slow, um, but that was about three months, and a lot of that you know within the first six months like we did not even think about dieting it was all transitioning out of keto and working on his relationship you know with food um there was some weight gain in that okay so that's that's really important to state he did gain some weight in that that period of time it can happen when you're transitioning out of keto i've transitioned a few people out and it's the same thing you know it's just more, more carbs, glycogen, all of that, right? And then when you're transitioning out of keto, you can have more cravings. Like that can happen. And then it it, it will start to level out. And you can you can talk on that if you want. But um with the binging, what is really important to understand is that it did just stop. Okay, so it wasn't that he just stopped binging in this period of time. It was a process over time of starting to binge less. Okay, so the binging would get further and further apart. And then if it happened, we would talk about what triggered it and really bringing awareness around why it's happening. Because if you don't know why it's happening, it's really hard to come up with the tools or a solution to help, you know, in those moments. So you want, do you want to talk a little bit about that, Andy, with, um, yeah. we can talk about some tools that you had that we implemented, um, or just how you were, you know, navigating those moments. Yeah. I think part of when we went into the transition out of keto and then into, kind of that maintenance phase. It, I even said in my check-in to Christine, I'm like, in the beginning, I was backloading dinner in a sense. So like yeah. my breakfast was smaller, my lunch was smaller, and then I had all this food to eat at dinner. It was like a cheat to binge because I had all this right. food to eat. Yet from, you know, six o'clock to 9 p.m. at night I had. <clears throat> and so I kind of... I don't until we're honestly, this just, that just hit me. Like I set myself up to be able to eat a lot of food in the end, at the end of the day, because that simulated a binge in a sense. Um, and I texted Christine or in my check-in, I can't remember which I was like, Hey, is this okay? Like I'm, I know I should be more balanced throughout the day. I'll probably feel better. I won't hit a wall or whatever, but like, 
I'm eating, you know, half of my calories at dinner. And in that moment, it was fine. No, let's keep moving forward. You're, you're hitting macros. You're doing well. Um, there's no issue with that. Um, and then we started to implement tools and I'm not a journaler. I just have never been into it. I've tried it. Um, but Christine challenged me to when I had a craving or when I had thoughts of binging of what time of day it was, what triggered it, what's the food. And so write about it. So I'd write about it, just a paragraph or whatever, and then sit for 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, if you still have those cravings, if you still have that, then eat it. And I did, but being not every single time, there were times when I'd have it and that craving would go away 20 minutes passed by and I was off doing something else and never came back to that thought. But then there was times when it was like in the past I'd sit down and even if it was a healthy sack, carrots and something, I'd eat the whole damn bag of carrots where yeah. In this moment, because I wrote about it, because I was cognizant, I had a serving of whatever it was. Um, and that sufficed the craving. And then you just moved on with the day. And now instead of, yeah, even though they're carrots, instead of being whatever a whole bag of carrots macros are, I'm only one serving over instead of the whole bag over. Um, that's a huge tool. Um, I, haven't had to use that tool in a really long time. Um, so that's awesome. Um, and then mm -hmm. w during this whole process, I went on vacation. I have a guy's trip every, every year where I meet seven of my best friends from elementary school and middle school. And we have a weekend together and it's a weekend. It's a lot of drinking, a lot of <laughs> great food, like just a ton of fun. Um, and I'm grateful for those times. And Christine talked about, we talked about how am I going to navigate this? Cause I don't want to go totally off the rails, but I also want to enjoy this time. And let's be real. We were all athletes at one time. Like I'm getting chastised in, the, in a sense of like not letting loose and just having a free weekend, <laughs> yeah. but right. I told them all about it. And we said a non-negotiable of like, okay, instead of drinking all that, we didn't set a drink limit, a non-negotiable drink limit. We set a non-negotiable of like, okay, don't start drinking until 3 PM. And, uh, of the three days, two days were successful. One day wasn't. And, but in the grand scheme of things, like following through on those two days was such a huge win in the long run versus just saying screw it and not following it and starting to drink at 11 a.m. when everyone else started drinking um right so that was non-negotiables are i use them today um i have a non-negotiable of i have to work out in the morning before i go to work um i found this groove in that and i got to work an hour early today to do this and i knew i had to get up a little bit early er to do the run and yeah. So I woke up 25 minutes early and ran and got out the door. And now I don't have this. I absolutely hate running. <laughs> uh, I don't have this workout looming, looming over my head the entire day of me because that would, that would occupy my headspace the entire day of like, okay, what time are you going to get home? Yeah. Even though it's a 15 minute run, like, when are you going to do it? You're going to be hungry when you get home. Are you going to eat before you run? Are you going to run hungry? Or what if something happens at work and you don't get home until seven? So like knowing that it's done and out of the way, like my day is yeah. great. I've already set myself up to be successful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he, he will set the non-negotiables, which is important. Correct. Right. Yep. So there, there I always, are, I always like, Go, go ahead. I was going to say, there were times when I went on my family vacation this summer of studying non-negotiables of, I can't even, I don't recall the specific non-negotiables, but it had to do with drinking. Um, just because we were in Anna Marie Island, like yeah, 
definitely want to have some drinks on the beach. Um, yeah, but it, I can't remember exactly what that non-negotiable was, but I actually ended up drinking less on that family trip than I have the last four years because of the non-negotiables. And like, I didn't even have to necessarily utilize the non-negotiables just because that's where my mindset was of, yeah, I don't need to drink at noon. It's okay. Like, let's have a drink at dinner and let's have a drink after dinner around the fire or whatever. Um, so yeah, non-negotiables are, are huge. Your, your diet was in a much more balanced place. Right. You know that you can have that alcohol if you want to have it. You're not in this restrictive mindset anymore like you were with keto, right? right? So you're much more likely to go overboard when you think you can't have it. Right. Right. It's all psychological there. That's a great point. When I was in keto and I'd go back to Ohio for Christmas or in the summer or whatever, I had all these foods that I don't typically have in my house. And it was just like, yep, going to have that, going to have that, going to have that, going to have that. And it was like, how much can I get in of these foods? Because I know when I go back to Texas that I'm not going to have them in my house. So it was like, get them all now or you're not going to get them. That's your chance. Exactly. Terrible mindset. But (laughs) hey, (laughs) that. And, and it's, that's, it's common too, though. Like, yeah, like that's what, you know, when it comes to keto, people are like, I'm doing keto. And it's like, well, is it actually working for you? Because yeah. it did work for Andy. Okay. He spent, what was it? The first year or nine, nine, yeah. 10 months, yeah. right? It, it actually worked and he could adhere to it. And then it stopped working. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's so important to be able to know and understand like if you're in a diet if you're doing a diet where you are how you have the need to binge and you're binging every weekend the diet isn't working right right so how no. can we take a more sustainable approach right this is is this a slow approach maybe yes mm-hmm. but going back to the binging in another huge clarity moment and i think we grow up in this at least in our culture of don't waste food. So on my family vacation, Mm. we, you know, we're in an Airbnb and we go to the grocery store and we buy these snacks and the kids, obviously my niece and nephew have all the snacks and they're flying home. I'm flying back to Texas. And my mom's like, well, we just can't waste this food. And like, I'm like, okay, well we'll start eating. And I literally started eating and I'm like, why, why am I eating this? We, I, I don't need to eat this. Like I, I'm not hungry. This isn't part of my, Yeah, this was a trigger. We uncovered yes, this isn't my, um, in my macros and I don't need this, but it was this don't waste food mentality. So like, yeah, I might as well just eat it because we don't want to waste it. And at that point I was like, literally put down the, whatever I was eating and was like, no, I'm not doing this. So that was a huge. Yes. So that, yeah, that had come from childhood. Exactly. And I grew up in a, and I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily, but I grew up in a, a family of you clear your plate. Like you, like that's what you do. And um, we ate at set times. We always went for seconds. Even like I have a, I have a really close family that basically had, when I moved to Texas brought me in and like Thanksgiving there, I spent the last 10 Thanksgivings with them. They literally make food for Thanksgiving day by the end of everyone being there. And by the end of the meal, there's barely any food left. Where in my family, across the board, aunts, uncles, cousins, whatever, we're cooking f- for an army and there's leftovers for a week mm-hmm. and you're <laughs> eating this food for an entire right. week. And that's just what I grew up in. And then right, wrong, or different. I'm not saying mm-hmm. that it's wrong. I'm just saying that's what I grew up in. 
And that was my mindset mm -hmm. that was conditioned in me of like, the first time I went to that Thanksgiving, I was like, dang, is there enough food for everyone? And because I'm used <laughs> to just these big heaping plates of food. Um, right, right. And just no holds barred, just get after it. So, yeah. Yeah, so bringing awareness around that and uncovering that was really big, too. Yeah. Right. So when he is around his family, he knows how to navigate and adjust accordingly now. Yep. Exactly. Awesome. Um, I do really have, love that. Yeah. Do you have any questions right now, Johan? Uh, this just kind of made me think. And um, because this episode comes out December 12th. So basically, like just before Christmas, you know, we've got two weeks left in a year. You just went through Thanksgiving, which is a big one over there. I'm in Europe. We don't have Thanksgiving here. Although, like, then again, like in Norway, where I live, Easter is really big. So that's kind of like maybe one that kind of makes up for that, you know. But I think like all across the world, Christmas, like that's a big one. I looked at a graph, which was actually on examine.com. Do you get those emails, Christine? Are you on their newsletter? Who's? Examine.com. Oh, no, I don't get their emails. There was a graph that showed kind of like weight gain, like around oh, certain yes. holidays. I did see that on their Instagram. And, and it might have been an Instagram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like Christmas, like worldwide, like that's the big one, you know? So I was thinking, so kind of like looking back at what you learned over the past you know, couple of years, maybe, or the things that you've really been benefiting from, like now, even during like Thanksgiving last week, what could you suggest the listener basically doing you know rest of the year you know christmas like how would you kind of set yourself up for success are you going to be tracking are you not what are your non-negotiable goals going to be like like that yeah kind of stuff. so it, it's kind of it's it's really great for me but also a little sad for me too because i'm not going back to ohio for christmas this year just because of my new job we've got a bunch of stuff going on uh and work doesn't stop but um I think it's just understanding that if it's a day or two, like, I, I don't know, I'll probably track just because I don't have any huge plans or anything. Um, if I was just, let's say I am going to Ohio, I probably wouldn't track for those five days that I was there, but would be super cognizant of what I was eating. I think I'd set a non-negotiable of, of it, at least getting outside and walking, uh, getting the steps in. Um, my sister's, kind of on board right now i'm getting my mom on board um Love so it. you know getting them out cool. together um and just doing even if it's a walk around the block it is ohio and i hate the cold so that's a uh <laughs> um a little bit of a hindrance but they have my my brother-in-law has a little a little gym in their basement where i would be able to get a workout in and i think setting those non-negotiables of okay so i'm there for five or seven days whatever it is get two or three workouts in and then the rest of the time get your steps in whether that's getting up in the morning before the kids get up and um go for a walk i'm a big proponent of spending time with family and friends because i don't get to see them that often so maximizing that time so if i still have to get up at six in the morning to get a walk in and staying, Christine's not going to like this because it's going to hurt my, my sleep averages, but we stay up <laughs> till midnight playing cards or one in the morning playing cards. Like I'm willing to take that sacrifice for those five to seven days to yeah. still stay consistent with my, what, what is important to me and my health. Um, like, I don't know. It, it's, it's cliche to say because I've gone through it it's and it's easy to say it and it's easier said than done, but like your Christmas or if it's Christmas Eve is bigger for your family, like have at it, like enjoy that time. Just remember, like you don't have to have 17 cookies, like six will be okay. And six is probably like in my mind, I was thinking about it. I was like, <laughs> what would be my non-negotiable? Would it be six cookies a day? or whatever it is, because those are there. Those are special times. Those are special treats. And my family, at least we don't make this food yes. throughout the year and enjoy it and know within a week or 10 days after getting back from that trip, 
I'm going to be back in the same spot I was before I left with no cheating, with no cheating the system, um, just being honest and upfront with the whole thing. Love it. We had just talked about this on two podcasts ago, like understanding that. Depends what. We talked about the holidays and just like understanding that things are not going to look the same. Yeah, it's totally normal to eat more than you normally do. Right. It's but, part of it. Right? Yeah. Like it, it's totally normal. Um, but like Andy just said, I love what you said. Like you can eat six cookies instead of 17, <laughs> you know, like, and, and have that. But we, we also talked about like planning for that obstacle, mm-hmm. you know, and if that does happen, okay, what are we going to do to kind of realign ourselves? Yeah. Right. So having that, you know, plan in place. Yep. Um, I think the last thing I want to talk about here is the difference in, so we just got out of a cut and he's at maintenance through the holidays. And then we're going to go back into a cut following the holidays. Um, it's just the difference this time around dieting versus uh, when you were in keto, um, just like your mentality and like things you were able to do. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. I think a huge one is our relationship and being able to trust you and you trust me that I'm going to come to you when I have issues. Um, I think being consistent, consistent is, I don't know if you've ever seen, it's like a clay body and it's this really obese like bottom half and then there's this upper half that's chiseled and he's literally chiseling away the fat and i saw that i don't know probably three or four months ago and i'm like that is such a great interpretation of what i'm doing it's literally and i know i said it before but it's one day at a time one meal at a time one workout at a time and you're taking just this little bit off every day where, yeah, it's probably not noticeable that day. It's not noticeable that week, but in three weeks, when you take those little chips and you pile it all up, you see this progress. And, um, I went on a tangent. What was your specific question? (laughs) (laughs) That's okay. But I love that. I love that. That's so great. Can you send me that? I'll find it. Do you have that somewhere? Okay. Okay. I think Um, I've seen that too. It's really good. Uh, No, like what I was, what I was asking was like this dieting mm -hmm. phase, right. Versus the dieting phase that you were in with keto, you know, you've been able to have drinks here and there and like you're eating carbohydrates and just how you felt the difference in how you felt um, with this more sustainable approach versus yeah, keto. I think it goes back to restriction. Uh, for me, restriction yeah. was a huge thing. A restriction was a huge trigger for me where I feel zero restriction in this format. Um, I can eat. If it's not the greatest meal, I can still eat it. I just need to plan for it in the beginning of the day. Um, and work my other meals around that. Um, I think, like I said, trust with you of even if it's, Hey, this came up, it's going to be a long day. Can we, now this was in, in the cut portion, this came up, it's going to be a long day. Can we have a refeed day, even though it's not scheduled? Yeah, absolutely. And Christine being open to that and not just shutting it down or just brushing it off and not even addressing it. Um, and I know if there was such a crucial time and it wasn't a great time for a refeed or a diet break, she would tell me that and explain why. Um, I, the, the difference is, and this sounds so, I said it at the, in, in your Instagram post, it is about weight loss and it is about being healthy. But the biggest thing in this whole process isn't about weight loss. It's about how my mindset has changed, how I'm confident in myself, how I love myself, how I 
um, and willing to be vulnerable. And that's huge across the board, not just in Christine and my Mm -hmm. relationship. It's in my personal life. It's in work life. Like you're willing to be vulnerable. Like you're going to build relationships way faster than, uh, if you're working with someone and you're acting like you think they want you to act. Um, when you're true to yourself, everything just kind of falls into place. Um, I told Christine this, I don't, if this, if this job opportunity came about nine months ago, probably would have listened, but probably would have never taken the leap at it because I wasn't confident in myself. Um, I wasn't confident in what I was doing in my personal life to be able to take on this new role in a pretty massive industry, um, where when the job was brought to my attention, it was like, Oh yeah, let's go after this. Let's do this. I know I can do this. Uh, it's, it's all back to it. It's just the mindset. It's, it's understanding why you do things mm-hmm. and being willing. I think that's, that's actually the, the phrase or the statement is being willing to accept that. Yeah. Maybe in the past you have failed maybe, and, but we don't learn from anything if we don't fail either. Failures aren't an end all be all. Yes. So we're, you fail and you move on and you grow from it and you learn from it. And that's why I am where I am today in this whatever third, fourth week of maintenance and down 36 pounds in a cut from a cut. Um, so yeah, awesome. it's, it's been awesome. Um, I think, Love as I that. said, I think another big one too is Christine programs. I do K training. So she understands the workouts that I'm doing. She knows the work that I'm putting in there, knows what exertion I'm having. So it's not this guessing game for her of like, well, what are his workouts? What are the intensity? And in with the other company, it was just like, I was doing my own thing. They didn't necessarily know exactly what my workouts were. I just feel better about that. That's a me thing. I lost you for a sec. Yeah, you're back. There we go. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it, that, that's a me thing. Like I love that she knows every aspect of my health and wellness and every aspect of my life basically now. Um, that's what I feel like you should look for in a nutrition coach or, um, someone that's programming your workouts for someone that's willing to be there every step of the way and work with you through those times. Not just like, okay, on to the next day, here's your macros, hit them. Love that. Um, yeah, so. when, when he, so he had like, he, well, he talked about the game days at the beginning with the other coach. We literally planned for refeeds every single game day. And like that helped him immensely, right? First of all, he's super active. Um, you know, those days he was getting like 25,000 steps, but it was just mentally more attainable for him to have more food on those days. So we planned for it. And, and it helps. makes it so much easier too. Like, yeah. And to that point. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. And I no, was going to say, it, it just helps to know like, hey, okay, that's my, that's my, you know, my maintenance day. I don't have to worry about dieting or something. Like yeah. I need that break. You know, it's going to be a big day anyway. So it's so much better to kind of do that beforehand, plan for it, know that it's going to be a refeed, refeed. Instead of saying like, okay, I'm just going to try and diet anyway. And she's going to kind of suck. And, you know, and then the next day you feel bad about maybe not being able to stick right. to it. To the point where those refeed days gave me the confidence to, I even worked out before my whole game day day started. I worked out, did the Saturday workout. And that was just, I just felt confident in what, we had talked about and the macros that I had that I was still able to do that workout, get it, get one more in for the week and then go throughout my day. Um, so prior to it was like, I am not, I'm doing the least amount because I have to get through this day. 
uh, on the old macros. I can see why that would be so hard. That's fine. Oh, with that many steps, hundred percent. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was. But also, like, but also yeah. just the mental aspect, the mental stress yeah. that you know he's going through that day too, just relieves some of that from him. You know. Yeah. And that's that's the thing, and and with the Christmas stuff right. too, where we're planning, it's like, it's not even about hitting your macros. It's just about that break mentally. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you're at maintenance or slightly below or slightly over, whether you hit your protein or not, it's just a break, and you need that sometimes. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. love that. Right. So I think I think that's Absolutely. all I got for right now. I think so too. <laughs> we're uh, we're at one hour right now, so I also want to be respectful of your time. Mm -hmm. But Andy, thank you for uh, for joining yeah, no, us. Man. This has it's been, been super cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, this has been awesome. I'm I'm glad we got to dig into that uh, Instagram post a little bit more, and and hopefully it resonates yeah. with some people. And hopefully you don't get blown <laughs> up too much. But uh, on the other on the other hand, hopefully yeah. you have lots of questions, and and a lot of people are are coming to you yeah. to. To help reach their goals do you have any so guys, last things to to say to um you know anyone who's struggling or in a similar situation it, it's up to you and it's got to be the right time for you and there's never going to be a right time so it's taking the leap of faith it's trusting yourself it's believing in yourself um because i can tell you three years ago at 347 pounds, I couldn't see this me. I knew this me was out there, but I couldn't see it. And it's legitimately taking it one day at a time and not beating yourself up for a rough patch and understanding yeah, that gonna that's be life. In that. You got to just keep, but you going. keep trying anyway. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Hey guys, if anything, like, if you run into questions, be like Andy, like hit us up, message me, message Christine, message Andy, like hit him up, you know, but like ask people for help. Like if you struggle with something and you can't figure out, that's okay. But ask someone, you know, and, and don't feel like we're going to be trying to like sell you or something, like, you know, we're actually just here to help. Like that's our goal with this whole podcast. So, Hey, if there's something you need help with, reach out, like I said. Or even like someone else, not even just us, a coach. Mm -hmm. Preferably not Andy's previous coach. But <laughs> <someone else>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but someone, someone who cares, you know. And I don't uh, want to talk shit on other people either, but you know yeah. what I mean. Like, yeah. If you need help, that's okay. Right. Yeah. Ask for right. it, you know. Yep. Amazing. Dude, mm -hmm. thank you. Thanks so much, Andy. It was so good to have you on. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. Uh, I appreciate it. It's been great. Awesome. Guys, thank you for listening. Remember to subscribe and follow us everywhere. You listen to the podcast, drop us a review. Thanks again, Andy. And we will talk to you guys next week. Thank you for listening. If you want to help us grow the show, please make sure to leave us a five-star rating or share this episode on your Instagram stories. Now, if at any point you feel like you need more help, you can always reach out to Christine or myself directly via any of the links in our show notes because we're here to help. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you in the next episode.